Hello everyone, and the natural lighting of the evening is making me look as pale as a ghost. Or maybe I am a ghost. So, this video is all about how to do Victorian rag curls. I'm sure everyone's probably heard of it, and yes, I know it's nothing really new or like revolutionary, but I thought to kind of spice up my version of this video, I'm going to talk a bit later on about the history behind rag curls and why they were kind of important for ladies' fashion at the time. But first off, we're going to start on how to actually make yourself rag curlicious. Yes. Yes. So it's very simple. Um, as you can tell, my hair is sopping wet because I just took a shower. You do not need to take a shower and your hair does not need to be this wet, but you do need damp hair. I just personally find that if my hair is wet, good. <laughs> it won't tangle as easily. And I did shampoo and condition it to help me brush through everything, which is also why it's looking a little limp. You'll also need a hairbrush and you probably should have a comb. I do not have my comb because I'm too lazy to go downstairs, quite frankly, and get it. So we're just going to be a little chaotic on the separation of hair. Other than that, you're going to need a little rags. That's right, just good old rags you chop up from fabric or whatever, a sheet, a, a spare shirt, I don't know, maybe not a spare shirt, but one you're done using. and. Essentially, what I did, um, I have a couple of varying lengths, but what I tried to do was make sure that to make sure they're long enough is I tried to measure out my hair from here down to the end roughly, double it, and then add a couple more inches because it's going to have to tie on the top. We'll show all that in the demonstration. And that's it. That's literally all you need to get this very classic, youthful Victorian hairstyle. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the actual hair styling. Okay, so I've got my hair separated in half, parted in half roughly, and it's brushed, it's tangle free, and that's what we like to see. Now, personally, I think you should have about at least I'd say seven to eight on each side. If your hair can do that, um, no less than six. But the more sections you do, the curlier your hair will be. Which is probably fairly straightforward. So yes, um, basically, I don't know, I'm just gonna start with, let's just start with a good chunk. So I'm gonna take it about I'm going to start with this chunk here, though that's a bit too much of the top and bottom hair. So you can see I still have my lower section of the front part there, and then an upper section. And I'm just going to throw all this back, because why not? Okay. A rag. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And what I think would be the best way, I also use these. I guess I should have said that at the beginning. Just clip it like that so it stays on top of your head. And then I'm going to wrap this around said curl, trying to keep the hair as smooth as I possibly can. Just a lot easier said than done. <laughs> and just twist it around like it's a maypole. Get that, uh, get that spring reference there? No, it's a little early, I guess. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. So, yes. Ooh, riveting content right here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I have kind of long hair, so <laughs> this is going to be a little bit of a lengthy process. We, we, ooh, ooh. Wow. Okay, so I've got the tip here, and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to 
catch that tip like that. Stop it. Catch the tip so it stays in. And now I'm gonna wrap the rag back up to basically cover the curl. Why is this important? Because, well back then, they would have slept in it. You do not have to sleep in it if you don't want to, but mm, I'm going to actually try and take a little nap and see what happens if it actually stays okay. So once we have it all done, and I'm a little short on this side, that's okay though. I'll just tighten it a bit. To keep it all in place, you just tie it. Tie that sucker. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be very, very strange sleeping with. <laughs> um, and you're probably wondering why didn't I go all the way up? If you actually do look at pictures at the time, you'll notice the young ladies and girls who did do this style. You can see like almost like about this much of the hair is not curled and then boom, curls. So this is the historical kind of way of doing it. I guess there is a 20th century version of rag curls that I haven't really looked into yet, but it looks like it's a little different where they kind of make sure it goes all the way up on the head. But we're going for the Victorian look, not that look. So as you can see, this is fairly straightforward. So as I start doing the other parts, I'm going to talk about a little bit, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of rag curl in the Victorian times and why this was fairly important for a lot of ladies. So yeah, why was Victorian rag curling uh, such a great thing for the Victorian era? Well, it was definitely something that kind of addressed a couple of problems. And if you notice in a lot of photographs, you will see that most of the people who have this style, as I kind of also been dropping hints, were young girls to, well, were girls and young ladies. So of course, this was a preferred way of curling someone youthful's hair without damaging it with curling irons or because maybe they didn't have the patience. Curling irons were not as revolutionary as we know them today. I mean, they were still pretty simple in design like what we have today, but they were a lot of work, which leads me to the next point as to why rag curls were very important. Rag curls provided a way for, so, <laughs> Curling irons were dangerous, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. If you did not know what you were doing, you were gonna send your hair, you were gonna burn your hair, or you were gonna waste a lot of time not really doing anything to your hair. <laughs> because yeah, they had to be heated up on a stove, which seems probably like a no-duh. But you know, though they cooled down rather fast, a lot of times before you could even get the look down that you wanted and that caused a lot of problems so a lot of times it also was sort of a class thing like only really kind of ritzy ladies would get to have their hair done with curling irons because they had a bunch and they had servants so they had a professional person doing it for them so this was a way for middle class to lower class people to still accomplish the very fashionable curled hairstyles that were so in vogue at the time. Uh, and I mean, curled hair was in during the Victorian era. It was pretty much in at least through the 1840s to the 1890s. And then in the 1890s, you started seeing, and especially into the Edwardian time, that suddenly curled hair was out. But a huge amount of time to the Victorian era that it was in. So of course women who couldn't really afford curling irons or didn't have the money to see a professional to do their hair still wanted to achieve the fashionable you know look of the time. We all do even now. So this was really a great way for those women to be able to get a hold of something that didn't cost you a lot of money. All you needed was rags, you know, or scrap fabric. I think this one's a bit big, but. <laughs> and you could accomplish that 
the curled look. Of course, like I said, it was also great for younger people, uh, younger girls who, you know, well, kids basically, who might have been a little fidgety or you really didn't want them to be around something like a hot iron. And just to kind of really put into the scope for you guys just how elitist curling your hair was with an iron was, let's talk about the price of curling irons. So <laughs> the one curling iron, one curling iron would average about three to six dollars. Oh no, 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 that's not in today's money. Back then, that would equate today to be roughly $68.52 to $137. Yeah, not kidding, for one curling iron. <laughs> so yeah, and on top of everything else, you weren't really expected to buy one. They were usually sold in sets. So, <laughs> buying yourself a pair of three or four or six suddenly cranked up to $1,000. <laughs> and obviously, most people did not have that kind of disposable income. And then you get into all of the aspect of who's gonna operate the curling iron. Now, if you're probably wondering why couldn't people just get away with one, again, this goes back to that whole it, it wasn't practical to just have one. They were on the stovetop and they were heated up, so essentially you weren't going to get very far just heating one up. You'd not even get half your hair done by the time it was cooled off. So that's why a lot of times you had to have multiple sets. And like, it's, you know, some of course richer women would have just oodles that could be heated up on the iron and while one was being used, you know, or whatever they could have, the other essentially being warmed up. I would think maybe if you really, really wanted the look and you wanted to be frugal about it, you could probably get away with two, but it would take you a pretty long amount of time to do your hair. And you might not know how to do it right. You might send your hair, you might burn it off, you might burn your skin, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> Again, it was just one of those things that was not super accessible to people because you really did want to have someone who knew what they were doing with the curling iron in hand. And a lot of upper class women usually had uh, female servants that would be curling their hair. In one article they said that the woman had literally two people attending her hair. And you could bet that some people that were really wealthy might have even had more. So that's really one of the biggest reasons why Rag girls were pretty revolutionary for young ladies wanting to get the fashionable look on a budget. Oops, my curl rag is running off on me. Um, what's going on here? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> of course, when you look at a lot of, I think I feel like this hairstyle a lot of people only associate with like 1850s, 60s, but you do see even in the 80s some people still doing this hairstyle. And for the longest of time I even thought this was something more just utilized by little girls, but you do see young, young women using it. Um, pretty much once you became an adult, you had that hair up because you were married, whatever. <laughs> You know, curling kind of became a thing that was just for special occasions and you'd go to a hairdresser. Or you wouldn't do it. <laughs> Which I think is why it's kind of interesting because speaking on how difficult it might be to curl your hair, if you look at some Victorian hairstyles, you'll notice that a lot of times the coiffure or the bun is rather simple, but they'll just frizz the front of their hair which would be rather easy for a single person to do on their own and you wouldn't need as many curling irons. So I almost wonder if that was another fashion adapted to the times for those wanting to have the curly look but that couldn't really afford it. Mm. This is where it gets hard because I cannot see the back of my head that well. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed that little history lesson or history discussion on the red curls. Uh-oh. I'm gonna have to redo this one. 
How dare it? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my hair and we'll talk about it after that. Alright everyone, so finally finished. I think this took me about 45 to 50 minutes. So it's not exactly your most time friendly thing. I certainly look cute with all my rolled bows. You can see I've got a few that I'm not covering all the hair up. I'm tired. <laughs> I like that killed my shoulders. Uh, it's still one of those hairstyles that if you could have like somebody help you with it would help especially in the back pieces. But this is pretty good for me doing it on my own. I'm trying to figure out I think I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven on this side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that. And quite honestly, I know that there were a few pieces I should have broken up into two, but again, I was just kind of getting really tired of it. It is tedious, but I'm actually going to now try and take a little nap, see what it's like sleeping in them, see if they actually hold up to sleep like they're supposed to. If you don't want to sleep in them, you still have to wear them for a while. Um, this was something that was meant to be slept in, so you should have had it in your hair for like eight hours. If your hair dries really fast, maybe you could get away with less time, but this is a lot of work, so I'd hate to see you pull it out just to have your hair still damp and have no curls. So uh, I guess I'll see you guys in eight hours for the reveal. We'll see what it's like if I make it eight hours with this in my hair. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I'll see you guys in eight hours for the reveal. Ooh. Well, good morning, everyone, and we're back. I have company with me today. That he's off screen. <laughs> so, this is after... Takeshi, stop it. <laughs> stop. <laughs> so, this is after a full night's sleep. It's actually held up pretty well, and it was okay to sleep in. It was actually really comfortable, which... You know, that was kind of the big question was, was it going to be comfortable to sleep in? and was it going to last. Most of them have lasted. It looks like I've got one that's unwinding, but funny enough, it's still like around the rag curls, so I think it's gonna be okay. Um, also, this one's coming a bit loose. Maybe I sleep on my right side a bit more than I think. So let's go ahead and unwrap these and get the reveal going. Also, excuse the first thing in the morning look. <laughs> So basically, we're just going to unwrap it. Here's our first curl. This one is going to be really, really curly. Because <laughs> boy did I wind this around this. This is definitely the time that you want to take. Like this is the part you want to be time consuming. But eventually once you get the bottom unwrapped. It looks like you just slide the rad right out. And look at that. Look at that. That is so cool. That's really cool. Alright everyone, I have a mild confession. I did not probably do as good of a job on my right side as I did on my left side. I do have my, my hair parts that way, so I do actually have more volume of hair on this side. And there were definitely times that I should have split the hair and not done as thick of pieces. And because of that, I've gotten more of a wave with some of the ones like in the back here. Oopsies! Um, the one in the front is just unfortunate. Willow! Willow! Get your butt off the television! So, the one in the front is unfortunately, um, was the right width. But as you guys kind of saw, 
it, it kind of unraveled itself a little bit. So we lost kind of the tightness, but I did get some that weren't total failures on this side. Yeah. <laughs> also, thank you for putting up with my cat in this video. In other words, if you're going for the full ringlet curl look, don't separate your curls. We've answered that question. That's not what it looks like. That's not what they did. If you want to do this for a modern look, go for it. <laughs> because definitely it's really cute. But now I can wear a modern hairstyle with it as such. And look how cute that is. My hair is all bubbly, like curly. Isn't it cute? <laughs> My bangs need to have something done with them, but what do you guys think? I think it looks cute. <laughs> so now I can actually wear this in modern days uh, life. <laughs> and that was a cat distraction. Oh my God, behave. I don't know if I'd really run a brush through it. I think you might risk turning tight curls into frizz. So I definitely would just go through it with your fingers. And it's really cute. I, I think you would definitely have to wear it up in your everyday life because we didn't get this part really curled, but it adds more flair to an otherwise kind of boring hairdo. I don't know. I think it's cute and this is how I'm going to wear my hair today. Maybe a little tidier. Uh, so yes, I now have four cats instead of two and we're going to have to put up with a lot of cat interruptions from now on because um, there's just so many now running around this house. But you guys all probably recognize Willow if you have been on this channel at all. He's my teddy bear. He's my little Russian teddy bear. Say hi, Willow. He's just grumpy. All he thinks about is food. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. And I'll see you guys next week. Aw. So will Willow. <laughs> Bye.